Okay. Thank you so much, TJ. Board of Commissioners, we are officially out of recess. Thank you so much for your time and talent, and thank you for returning today. Um, for the record, Clerk Watson, uh, today is Thursday, August the 27th, 2020, and it is now 2.01 p.m. Board of Commissioners, when I call your name and district, please respond accordingly. I just want to verify our return uh, to the uh, from the recess. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell. Mitchell the third. Present. District two, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Pre present. District three, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. I'm here. And District four, Commissioner Ann Jones Guider. Present. Okay, Ramona Jackson Jones, I'm present. We have all five of us here. Thank you so much again. Uh, Board of Commissioners, before I call on our county administrator to present once again, certainly. Uh, him and his finance team went back last. Uh, they've been worked through the night and also through this morning to sharpen their pencils as we both try to, all of us try to leverage, number one, the voices of the citizens and their cries because it really uh, weighed heavily on all of our hearts. And, uh, and secondly, uh, to balance the needs of the county. I believe in my heart and soul at this time, Board of Commissioners, uh, that we heard all the cries of the citizens uh, on yesterday and uh, on the 17th and 18th of August are doing our public hearings. Uh, certainly, uh, so, many, so many citizens have reached out to all of us, uh, all of us, some individually, some collectively, and expressed their concerns about this unparalleled pandemic. Uh, and how it has this pandemic has affected their, affected their lives, their stability, their ability to survive, and their ability to purchase medication and food. This is the most unprecedented virus in modern history, and I know our citizens' ears have not fallen on deaf ears because their voice matters. This is very difficult for me and all of us to realize that we are living history right now because this is something that will be in the history books and it will be talked about for many years after all of us have maybe gone home. But I just wanted to just be very honest with us. And I want to thank you, Commissioner Carthen, yesterday. I appreciate your remarks to the citizens, our citizens, particularly in District 3. I know that's your district. And you indicated that you heard their cries. Commissioner Guider, thank you so much for developing a spreadsheet that took you over 24 hours to complete in which you examined the integrity of the of our budget for 2020 and what you perceived uh, was a $5 million, uh, $5 million surplus. But uh, thank you so much, but due to the variability and some of those uh, encumbrances, uh, we were just able to uh, identify about $500,000, but we really appreciate your time for that because it takes a long time to sit down and dissect the budget. So thank you so much. And also thank you, Commissioner Mitchell and Vice Chairman and Commissioner District 2 Kelly Robinson for insisting and persisting that the county administrator and the finance team continue to sharpen their pencils to find every opportunity to reduce the burden on our citizens because their voices matter. My team has worked through the night. They've been up all day this morning, started very uh, bright and early about 7 p.m. Uh, to verify some of the accuracies, uh, accuracy of some of the numbers. Uh, we benchmark with other counties to determine what has been done in this crisis, because this is all unfamiliar to all of us, uh, to, term, to determine how they balance budgets. And we checked every box, box, and we found that other counties are utilizing a small percentage of their rainy day funds uh, to keep their governments operating and Douglas County uh, certainly at the will of the board, hopefully will do the same to reduce this millage rate to re, uh, to re, uh, lessen the burden on our citizens, citizens while trying to sustain our government. I can go on and on, but my heart is heavy. I certainly uh, have not slept a wink in two weeks worrying on, about what we need to do to balance and then trying to leverage that with the cries of our citizens because this is a tough time all of us and we're all in this together and I appreciate what our citizens have said 
and what they have done and demonstrated how important this is to them for us to do what we can do and do our best to get this millage rate down as much as possible. I did make it very clear, uh, certainly it would be just totally difficult to get it all the way down, but who knows? We'll see what the day brings. With no further ado, uh, County Administrator, I would like you to come forth and present uh, our final document that we've been able to just pencil down through the night. You, should I say you and your team, I won't take the credit. You, you certainly have the credit and thank you so much, County Administrator, for coming forth. Okay, I'll share my screen, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. So, all the same uh, revenues and or there, nothing's changed. Um, so the additional budget cuts, three hundred fifty thousand. The uh, radio system, two fifty. The Colgate pilot, two hundred thousand. And then the CARES Act reimbursement, five point five million. Those are all the same. Everything else has been changed. The COVID expenses um, currently that would come out at 5.5 million would be the uh, the 100,000 for the uh, the mail outs for absentee ballot requests and the $900,000 uh, resolution. There's a little bit of money left in the resolution, so that's why that number is just a little over 900,000. So the expense reductions uh, to date, elimination of the remaining 2020 BIRs, and again, none of these have changed. Uh, 2.17 million, reduced defined benefit plan contribution to the minimum requirement, 1 million. Uh, frozen positions, 451,000. Elimination of the remaining 2020 training budget, 331,000. Uh, removal of Christmas bonuses for employees, 100,000. Uh, expense credit for additional operating changes, 800,000, and implementation of the furlough program, that'd be five days for all employees for the remainder of the year, 723,000. So the far right column, sorry, I have to move this. So the far right column assumes a 93% collection rate. Uh, $9 million fund balance and zero meals for economic development. So this results in a 0.932 millage increase above the 10.213. Uh, the total millage in increase, including the rollback, would be 1.32 with a total proposed 2020 millage rate of 11.145. Any questions on that? Okay. Board of, Board of, Board of Commissioners, Board. do you have any questions for Mark Teal, for our county administrator? So this would result in about $4.5 million in additional revenue. Um, that would require us to have a very, very lean 2021 budget and serious budget reductions would uh, have to be considered, not need to be, have to be considered. Okay, any questions from the Board of Commissioners? And Mark, what is the percentage of this budget? I know 32, so what, what is the percentage that you're presenting? Is it 13.4 percent? The percentage is. Madam Chair, the percentage increase. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hold on. That would be 13. Point four. Okay. And then also, Mark, you said you would put the chart up to say what the effect would be, you know, the impact for our citizens. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. Can you see that? Yes, could you just 
state all of them so the citizens can hear and also you and our commissioners. And that's how. Okay, so the point nine three two that would be above and beyond the current 10.213 millage rate. Um, so that would result in a $100,000 house. It'd be $3 a month or $32 a year. $125,000 house, $3 a month or $41 per year. $150,000 house, uh, $4 a month or $50 per year. $175,000 house, $5 per month or $60,000 per year. The average household in Douglas County, um, $200,000 would be $6 a month or $69 per year. $225,000 house would be $7 per month or $78 per year. And a $250,000 house would be $7 per month or $88 per year. $275,000 house would be $8 per month or $97 per year. And a $300,000 house would be $9 per month or $106 per year. Okay. Thank you so much, County Administrator. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mark? Thank um, you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Vice Chairman Robinson. Mm -hmm. Got a couple of comments. Um, uh, first, um, I guess this is going in a different direction than I thought, um, but that's okay. Um, all right, so what hasn't been considered um, is sell of those uh, vacant lots and land that we own. I get this time, but it's still an asset that we have that we can aggregate and get rid of. Um, just make, make that note. Second, uh, you have buildings that you could lease back, um, get cash on that. You guys know we've turned down a couple of projects where we would get cash up front, but that's okay. Put that, we, we're, we're making some notes. Um, I mean, obviously, um, Commissioner Mitchell already brought up the consolidation. Um, what I haven't really heard is cuts. Um, and it, it's, it's extreme in the sense that you, if you don't cut deep enough, you got to rot, you got to raise the rate commensurately. The math is the math. And all right, so it puts my fund balance mark at 9 million. Is that what I just heard, Mark? Yes, sir. All right. I thought I heard that right. So that's it. That's our fund balance, nine million. Um, you have nothing to work with. Um, it, it's not. It, it. It's like a minimum wage budget. You, 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 it's not a living wage. It's not a, you. You can't operate with that. That that that's that. You, you're not that efficient. It's not private sector. Um, this is not a logistics company, um, and I'm I'm like okay. Um, I get it. I mean, I appreciate the effort and stuff, but um, and I get where we are. We were led here. All right, so here we are trying to get out this hole. Um, I get it, but yeah, we have to own this, and we have to own it together. I agree. Um, um, I think like Commissioner Carter said, yeah, we shouldn't even be here. But we're on the bridge. And I'm trying to reconcile this. And I, I think all of us, I mean, I didn't move until noon today. I mean, I'm just, uh, you know, you guys not the only ones. It's just pondering this. Right? Like, okay. You know, um, and it's it's leadership is, is making that tough decision in spite of. It happens. You got to make a tough decision here, right? This this is not at least three of us, um, not our first rodeo. We've had to make tough decisions in light of without bailouts, um, um, with, 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 without support from Congress. Uh, and we had to do what we had to do um, to keep the functioning of the government going. And this is a tough one because, yeah, we're going we gonna to feel it no matter what to the public. Now, we we feeling this, so th this dialogue is important. 
um, um, it, it is important. Um, so, which is why it's taking us like it's going to take us, because it is what it is. So it, it, it shows you um, a certain insight in how we think. Um, it, it's something that um, David Corbin said, probably for the past couple of budget meetings, probably this last year, he said it both during the retreat and then the summer retreat, this time last year, as well as during the, um, um, the actual um, um, budget about financial maturity. The, the, the importance of that. And I don't know if everybody heard that. And I don't know how many citizens were in the room and stuff, but I know that knowing our cast, the characters of staff, but it, it's like, okay, you gotta know what you're looking at. And it's what's called a cause and effect, right? And, and I'm, I'm looking at this. And while I get it, I just would have liked to have seen, um, again, the cut needs to be commensurate with what what the bogey is. So my question is, is that um, to county administrator, what are you proposing um, by way of tight budget? I mean, it, it, you, I mean, we're talking about staff reductions. You're talking about salary hits, ten percent across the board. Go 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 back to your governor. Yeah, you know, I get it, but he, he did what he had to do. Now, of course, he had the first of the year. That's a little bit different than us nine twelfths in a year. So we can't make up much. You know, by the time this goes into effect, we only got three months. I, I, I get it, right? But let's not talk about what we intend to do. It's got to be on the table today. I, I would need to know. Well, it, it, um, we, the last year we said we said no be ours. About this time last year, when we didn't roll back, and we moved this thing, and, and of course it, it flipped 180 degrees. And so I'm 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 sitting here, right? We say, okay, we'll do this one more time. We're gonna, we're gonna tighten this thing up. But I'm I'm I'm, I'm concerned to, to the capacity to be able to deliver that. Right? This this is this is real. Right, um, I, I, I'm I'm short on eloquence today, um, but I'm thoughtful, and I think it's something that, again, I hear you, Mark. I got it. You, I, I don't have any, much questions about it. I mean, we've gone on over this enough, and of course, I I do comprehend. Um, I I just I I still want that question answered though. Regarding like, well, what type of cuts? If I cut 10% across the board, what that give me with a $90 million budget, that's $9 million. Um, if you say 10% for everybody and just like, whether it's head count or salary hits, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's why you're here. I mean, I guess I could figure it out, but I, I, I'd like to see, see, there's more to this equation. This is just one part, right? It, it, it's not complete. It, it's not a complete proposal. I, I can't act on this, not right now, not at this second, right? Without that that major question, well, well hi, mm. because I'm also looking at what where it leads us as a county to operate. The razor thin. Do you know what you just said, Mark? You know I know you, what you said, but it, it razor thin. I get it. Um, you know I I I, I get. My, my dad told me this one day. It's that about being followers and leaders. And he got on me one day. I was, I was still living in Cleveland, Ohio, about eight or nine years old. And it, it, it I, I did something as any young kid did and got in trouble. And let's just say he, he chastised me. He just rebuked me. And never again from that moment, I mean, he cast me straight. I mean, talk about following. Right? You. Leadership is that like you got to do what's right in spite of it being right, no matter when nobody else is around, making that tough call, making that tough decision. Right? I, I, I get, I, I get, I hear my citizens. Right? I, I understand that, um, and I, I have to give um, credit to the administration um, over these past four years, and that though, there was other capital projects that we did, we did. But we did our energy audit. It was about two and a half million dollars. You 
we bought some share of cars, um, you know, obviously that were well overdue. We, 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 we did, we got rid of those pipe farms and stuff. So a lot has been done with very little. You came in at 14, but 14%, you slid down. It's okay. But you, you see how this works now, right? A lot has been done. Now I know we're trying to get across this river. Right, because we, we, we know on the other side there is an economic development engine, and it is going to kick in. And you have to have economic development. We're no longer a rural town. You got to have jobs. I mean, you you move where jobs are. That's how people move back in the day. You move to where the jobs were. Right. So, commensurately, I'm looking at this. I know we we got a future. We just got to get across this river that's raging. And the tsunami is like right coming down that like okay now you can't get there with this you gotta make it across and I'm 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 just um I'm concerned um, about what I'm hearing and um, um, I'm gonna go ahead and yield the floor with this because I probably have one more comment but Mark can you in my closing can you give me some insight in what you're thinking uh, considering framing. I'm not looking for an absolute not at this moment, but what, what, what are you thinking by way of um, yes, additional sir. adjustments? Yes, sir. Well, I received this proposal about two hours ago, so there's not enough time to go into detail, but essentially we would have to cut approximately 8 to 10 million uh, for the 2021 budget. Now, we could get through 2020, but 2021 budget, we'd have to cut about 8 to 10 million, and so you're looking at, you know, operating costs, Cuts across the board, um, possibly salaries and/or uh, headcount, so employee reduction. Okay. But as far as the details, no, we haven't had time to look through those. That, based on whatever's approved by the board, we will look through that during the budget process, which starts in the next week or two. Right. No, it's okay. I'm. I'm I was just trying to frame context. Uh, all right. I yield the floor for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Any other questions from the board? All right, thank you, Mark, so much. Okay, Board of Commissioners, here we are. Board of Commissioners, do we have anyone that would like to make a motion? On Certainly, we just put that presentation out for you and then also wanted to frame what uh, is planned for going into 2021. Uh, we know that we're gonna, we, we will have to be tight and operate uh, and take some of the fat off, such as the training and travel and uh, look at perhaps 10% across the board. We're gonna have to do things to double down on our expenses because we are in a pandemic. And those are the things we already have a framework built for 2021 that um, Mark and I have been looking at. And also not only me, but the finance team, uh, which is uh, Sabrina. And we realize that it will require some discipline uh, in 2021 because I just don't see any changes coming forth in this pandemic. So with that, um, right now, I don't we don't see any changes happening probably within the next seven or eight, nine months. We're just not sure. Everything is uh, at this time is unparalleled and is certainly uncertain. Um, Board of Commissioners, anyone have a motion? Okay. I'm gonna try it again. Board of Commissioners, anyone have a motion? Well, I'm gonna make a motion. Board of Commissioners, I wanna make a motion to, uh, for the 2020 set of meals at 11.145, uh, which would, uh, require the millage rate at 11.145, which will be 1.32 meals and at a percentage of 13.4%. Okay, we don't have a motion or a second. Commissioners, anyone have a motion? Mark, I guess you're just gonna have to call uh, the tax commissioner and uh, set up another time, uh, see if we can get an extension because no one is uh, providing a motion at this point. 
So please do reach out to our tax commissioner. I see someone's hand, um, but I don't think that is that one of our commissioners. OK. Mark, please reach out for an it's, extension. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, her hands up. OK, Commissioner Carthen, I, I can't see. I'm looking. That's, Commissioner. <laughs> that's, that's OK. Uh, my question is is for Mark. So what what we are voting on today, and I think this is just an extension for those uh, constituents who are watching us for this um, special call meeting. Uh, you just said we would have to cut eight to ten million dollars for 2021, but right now we're only dealing with 2020, right? Yes, that's correct. But if this mill this millage rate will carry into next year, mm -hmm. um, and in order to keep the same millage rate, we would have to cut eight to ten million dollars in order not to go through this same process in 2021. So eight to ten million dollars would that mean that we would have to cut into public safety, fire, EMS? Uh, It'd be very close. More than likely, yes, we would have to. We would have to. Okay. See, that's 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 one of the things that I keep hearing from my constituents is they don't want us to cut fire EMS and uh, safety, and those are very very vital to this community. So I don't know why we're even entertaining this one if if that's not going to keep us from having to do that. So. I just wanted to be clear on what you were saying with having to cut and, and what that would entail. Um, I yield, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mark. Certainly, um, our, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Mark, in our discussion, and certainly the email uh, that I sent you, I said excluding public safety. That's very, very important as we go into 2021. So we were not looking at anything related to public safety. I agree with your constituent, Commissioner Carthen. Public safety is critical at a time such as this. Uh, we talked about other areas, uh, Mark. Um, certainly leadership requires tough decisions. And as Commissioner Robinson said earlier, but certainly this is a budget that you'll be managing as our county administrator. So certainly I'm not going to push or coerce you, but it, uh, you provided an update today, you and your team. And certainly this is what you brought forth. So if there are no other questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners, if you don't have a motion, if you don't want to make a motion, I see another hand. I'm not sure. If, is that Commissioner Carthen's hand? Yes. Commissioner Carthen. Thank you. Uh, is Sabrina on the on the line? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm here. OK. Sabrina, when looking at this, is this the millage rate we as a county need to be at? Is this what you recommended? Is this what the finance team and uh, Mr. Corbin recommended for us as a county to keep our rating? Um, because we know this is this is one snapshot in time, but we just want to make sure we're making the right decision. Is this the millage rate that will keep us from coming back to the table, keep our fund balance where it needs to be, keep the county's rating um, where it needs to be. Is is this that is that is this millage rate able to do that for us? No, ma'am. OK, um, well, however, we'll one, the one that was presented yesterday morning, the two point three five, that one was. Yes, and that'd be a total millage of twelve point five six three. Got you. OK, that's what I needed to know. Thank you so much. And I yield. And, oh, go ahead, Sabrina. <laughs> and I just obviously, y'all can make whatever decision you guys want, but I do want to stress the urgency of the timing. If a decision isn't made today, we have to start the advertising process all over, and then it comes into a, a dire need of cash flow. Got you. Just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you for letting us know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Guider, do you have any comments? I'm just trying to see if any of my commissioners have comments. Commissioner Guider? Um, just same old, same old. Um, I think whoever voted for the, uh, this budget ought to own it and vote for a millage rate. I agree. 
I yield back. Okay. All right. Any other comment? Madam Chair, Ken. Yes, Ken. I strongly encourage you to stay on the line with this and do not adjourn this meeting because if you go through another sequence, I, I think it will have ricochet effects on other governments that are on the tax bill as well as your cash flow. I hope you're hearing what Sabrina's saying. Yeah, I heard him. And then I also heard what it takes is the 2.35, which we talked about yesterday. I brought it before the board. Certainly can call for another motion on that 2.35. And then we uh, certainly, uh, hopefully, I have not received one <laughs> second on any motion that I've called. Board of Commissioners, anyone else uh, would you like to make a motion before I try to make another motion? I, I, I would, and I, and Ken, you were um, on point. I would agree. No, don't, don't, don't walk away. Um, it, you, you can't do that. Uh, you can't kick this can. Um, I, I would almost say we need, we need to pause because now we got to talk, right? What I, what I felt over the past two three weeks was that this was just being presented wasn't much collaboration. Um, um, not not from where I come from uh, and how you would collaborate. Um, it, and so, I mean, my interpretation of why it's just, it's stalling is, is that it's not connecting. It's, it's like one way. And, but yet I'm okay with that if it was accomplishing the target. Um, and it, it's, you have to count the costs, right? You got to pay for this, right? You can't go from one extreme to another. Somewhere in the middle, got to be balanced. You know, this 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 budget required a commensurate commitment to fulfill it, right? I, I think that the while I know skin of the game is appropriate, I think it's, it, it it just be like wow, you, it, it's going to hurt the government in a way that like now that's no, it, it sounds good. Do y'all know what's being said? It like that ain't it either. Um, it, it, it's portions of that, but it, it's just it's just swinging like this. And and I'm just like, okay, guys. Um, I just I just need a minute. Um, I, I would um to, to um, the legal's um, suggestion. I probably just need about a half hour to collect my thoughts. I think, um, and I don't know about my peers, maybe an hour and just come back. We, we, we need to talk though on, on how we gonna get there. Um, you know, if, if when, when things are presented up or down, it's just yes or no, right? But but way legislation works, you work through it. It's collaboration, go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back. You, you try to get there, right? I, 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 I mean, we see it operating right now at Congress. You, you, you gotta. It, it ain't the president just comes and drops something like no. You, you, you got to work together. It's co branches. And so I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get this solved. It's not hard. Um, it, it's just that we can't be in denial of what we're looking at. And we, 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 we have to own this. You know, I, I and, and to Madam Guider's point. Um, I voted for this budget, um, and um, regardless of why I voted for it, I stood strong. I think commensurately, it needs to be the same thing to get out of it. It, 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 it can't pretend like it didn't happen. Um, I, 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 I'm, and I'm speaking to the administration, and, I, and, and guys, y'all know we, we go round and round, um, um, but this one right here is a little bit different. You know, um, 10 years ago, we knew what we had to do. And we just did it, moved on. We didn't have all this analysis. We didn't have to go through all this. It's like, what's the number? All right, let's go. 
this right here is like, I mean, I get process, you know, Commissioner Mitchell, I know I respect process. You have to go through what you go through. So I, I, I acknowledge that. But this is one where, okay, guys, you know, we, I'm going to stop there. I yield. I'm good. But I, I agree, don't, let's not leave. But I, I don't, I, we, we need to be thoughtful about this. Uh, I think right now, I, I think there's a, a, a big gap in distance between what's proposed to like, okay. Okay. And, and it's like it's going around the obvious. It goes here, it goes there, it goes there. Like, okay, but it's right here. It's going around it. And, and, and so, so I, I think to your point in listening, we also have to listen to each other. We, we have to hear that all of us have a vote and all of us weigh in um, in a way that we have to see ourselves in that vision to make sure that it's commensurate to, you know, obviously there's always um, uh, shaving of edges. I mean, we're not saying in the absolute sense, but um, um, we got to get this one right. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to get this one right, and um, um, and we just got to get our peace um, and, and where we are. So it's more of that. The numbers are already there. You, you Mark, y'all don't have to do no more. You don't have to bring out no more PowerPoint presentation. You don't have to go through all that. I mean, other than what we ultimately decide, just put the final number in. But but I mean, I'll yield the floor for now. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Chair. Mm hmm Commissioner Mitchell, thank you so much, um, Commissioner Robinson. Commissioner Mitchell, you have the floor. I, I will be just brief and direct to the point. The downside to all of this, as Commissioner Guider, she didn't state it so eloquently, though, but however, we knew that this budget, I thought, even then, was too aggressive. I thought then that we were in trouble with this budget, but it passed and you and all of us took ownership of it. Why are we running now? I'm not sure. But if you took ownership of it, take ownership of it now. It was your budget. It was your idea. We massaged it and did all we could to say, no, maybe tweak this, don't tweak that, don't give this. But this is where we are now, which I shared this with my colleagues who was on the board then when we did the 23 point, whatever that number was, based off what was happening prior. My philosophy hadn't changed. It's still the same. If you do what you are doing, as we, as I said, with this one, and yes, this is part of this administration and the prior administration. If you continue to dig the hole, it only gets deeper. That's where we are now. I agree with Commissioner Guider. Take ownership of it. Understand that you made a mistake and let's move forward and not take two steps backwards and try to figure out how we're gonna cut 10 million mark, correct me if I'm wrong, or 12 million, somebody in finance helped me with this number, you know, when we get to the top of the year, it's not gonna make sense. You, you're only setting yourself up again for failure. Own it, don't try to sneak out the back door and deal with it. I hate that we're here, but I'm still part of the team. And as I say, and I think my colleagues and others would say, my voice matters. District one matters. But now for those who took ownership of it, stand up and be accounted for. And let's move forward. You can't run now. This monster was created by us. And it's going to have to be either deflated or recreated or adjusted by us. In that vein, I'll yield and 
we'll see where it goes from here. Madam Chair, thank can I have another, another comment? May, may I? Uh -huh, yes, thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. And you ready, Commissioner? Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. All right, so no, I, yeah, no, I, no, I get it. Look, look Douglas County, it, it, we, we don't really have a lot of that. But yeah, you may have some areas that, you know, anybody can say, well, take that straw away and get away, but you, you really don't. We're not a metro big, you know, big giant county. Again, I always use myself as a reference. I, okay, you can lose a little bit, but okay. The density of this is that, no, we're going the wrong way. The issue is revenue. It's not expenses per se. Yes, if you could lose weight and sculpt and so forth. Yeah, I mean, that's always healthy, right? So, okay, but that ain't what this issue is. The rating agency told you we have a concern about declining revenues. Yeah, it's six pages saying how great, how great, how great. But Okay, did y'all not see them six words? It's revenue. It's revenue. It's revenue station. And, and, and it, it's revenue. And we're solving the wrong problem. We're on the wrong side of the ledger. And it's like, okay, guys, I mean, do that. Mark, great job. You need to do that. You need to show the, the, the citizens that you tighten up. But that, that's only one part of it. The other part is revenue. For this size county, it, it's like, no, you, you, you don't want to hurt the government by making it dysfunctional by... Um, destabilizing the operations, which no, it's right where it pretty much needs to be. Okay, you can shave and sculpt a little bit, but you, that, that's not the issue. The issue is revenue. Guys, hear me. The issue is revenue. We're solving the wrong part of the equation. It's revenue. And I'm trying to keep this one simple. Um, um, it, it, it's your revenue. Um, I, I appreciate the employees. Um, they've um, They've done a great job. Um, they have shown their commitment during this pandemic. And yes, we all do have to have skin in the game because they know what it means to be um, public servants. I get it. But uh, what was proposed earlier, and I know it was only two hours ago, like, no, you, and with the suggestion, what's going to happen next fall, like, no, no you're going the wrong way. Uh, the Commissioner Carthen is like, no, you, you, you got to, you, that, that was my, always my challenge with the way. Historically, things have been, and I don't know any other uh, municipality because I've only been on one place uh, here. Um, but it's like we just think in the moment. We, we don't forecast. We don't look down. It's like, okay, it was always like, well, we can't forecast. Like, well, why can't you? Like, because it was always the, 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 the what was not being said was the, the political moment. Everybody was a political moment. If you're going into an election moment, you, you do these great things to say, look at me. But it's always about political moments. It's like, okay, I, I get it. I would do it. It's sort of like when you were raised by your parents, you knew certain things that way. If you became a parent, you wouldn't do it that way. All right. So it's one of those like, no, I, I saw how they ran this thing. I saw it perfectly and clearly. And now this is where we're at right now. This is what I call fiscal policy reform. Right? You know, using um, um, your unink fund using um you know borrowing money from these other funds like taking from the kids one more time we we need to i'm going to put some, forth something to, to to constrain that like well i mean that i mean you could have gave fire and ems or, 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 or what did the city contribute to that what get them raised with that see we're not thinking we're not looking at the whole thing now i can get it but they're self-contained huh i mean that, that, it's self-contained huh. something to think about but I, I'm just saying, um, I, I, yeah, we just we need to think about this one. T take some time, take a pause. I, I think we can get it done, Madam Chair. It's just we just gotta back up for a minute. Um, as they say, don't leave the table. Uh, we've seen Pelosi and Schumer and those guys like, no, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do that that, that day. Um, and we we don't have the luxury of Congress, uh, and that we're regulated, and it has deeper implications. Uh, and, and while they, they, you know, we, you guys get that. So, um, again, those are my thoughts, and I'm going to yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner, for your insight. Thank you, all of you, all the commissioners, for your insight. Uh, certainly, uh, what I'll do is uh, sound, I, I think I believe I heard some, uh, you, Commissioner Robinson, said an hour. Is that what we need? Yeah, just give it an hour. So, yeah. And, I mean, 
poll with everybody else now. Don't, don't, don't let it be about I me. I just want to make sure Commissioner Carthen is an hour, uh, well, 3.45. Is that good for you? Yes. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Well, I, I have a four, so it, it will be pretty darn quick, though, because I got to prep for my four. Okay, so what time would be good for you? It'll be after five once I get in my four. What time is it now? It's, it's two four two forty six. All right, so can we two thirty? Oh no no yeah I'm saying no it's uh, three thirty. Oh. <laughs> right. Does three thirty yeah. work for you? Yeah, I, I think the sooner the better, but I've got to prep for my four. Right. And I'm just saying, you guys are talking about, you know, that that's going to be pushing me. But I'm I'm willing to to you know try to work it out because I think this needs to kind of take place. I mean, I I'm sitting, I'm willing to, to talk now. I'm willing to try to get things done now. But I, I I think we need to breathe, and I think everybody needs to kind of go back in their corners and and have conversations. I get it. So, um, well, go maybe ahead. that's too long. You want to do it 15 minutes? I mean, I would just I would just. That sounds realistic to, to, to get get you get everybody moving. Uh, if not, you might lose me. But you know, now we need a full house, Madam Chair. I'd like to re reconsider, re represent maybe just 15 minutes. It is. We don't need any more information. We just need to, like you said, breathe. But it, again, now I'm check with Madam Guider and, and them and see if they're okay with just just 15 minute pause and come back in and okay. finish. This. Mm -hmm. Okay, Commissioner Carthen, are you okay with 15 minutes from now? I will be right here. Okay. What about you, Commissioner Guider? I can be here, but I don't understand where we're going. What corner are we going to? <laughs> are we going to be uh, offline with the public and be talking to each other? Or are we going to be just sitting here for 15 minutes? Yeah, we need to be, we should be able to talk. Um, Ken. Mm. Attorney, okay. Bernard, Attorney Bernard, and this may and it may be inappropriate for an executive session. We just have to call one another. You have 15 minutes to you chat. Can, you can take a recess. I, I think. Yeah, you can recess for 15 minutes. The board members can talk with each other. They can't congregate in a discussion that would be quorum because that would violate the Open Meetings Act, and you can't go into executive session. To have this kind of discussion. So, if you give a 15 minute recess and call the meeting by the order, board members can do what they want so long as they don't meet in quorum. That's right. it. Okay. Board of Commissioners, we're going into recess. Um, and we will, I will see you in, in three minutes after three. So, it'll be 3 03 when you return. Okay. So, for the public, we will, the camera will stay on, I suppose, Mark, and we'll stay here. On silent mode, is that how it's working for everybody watching? Yeah, so just keep your Microsoft Teams up and we'll make sure everybody's muted until 303. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, TJ. And we are back for the commissioners from our recess. Sabrina, I have a question for you, our deputy director. What was the number that David Corbin gave us to behold again on Monday? I just want to make sure before I, and I'm I'm, I'm certainly going to yield to my commissioners to make a motion. But what was the number uh, that David Corbin gave us to re to bring you? I believe it was 2.35, was it? Yes, ma'am. And that's without economic development. So it'd be okay. a total millage rate of 12.563. Okay, 12.563. And, okay. Board of Commissioners, are we the one like I'm to make Yes. I'm sure also that 2.35, you still have to add the rollback to it, which gives you a total of a 2.738 increase. So the total 2020 millage rate would be 12.563, like Sabrina. So that's the yes, yeah, that's correct. Because as Dave is giving it based off of the on top of what the budgeted amount was. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Okay. So that'd be a 2.73 millage rate. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Board of Commissioners, uh, Mark, 
before I even call for this first motion. So you say this is a 2.73 millage rate increase? 2.738. 2.738. And what is the... Um, the okay. total millage rate would be 12.563. Okay. That's zero for any economic development. Right, no economic, economic development. Board of Commissioners, I would like to make a motion for a millage rate increase of 2.738 uh, with, um, that's uh, 2.738 meals and the millage rate would be 12.563. Do we have a motion to approve? Madam Chair, did you make the motion or are you asking for a motion? I'm making a motion. I'm sorry, I'm, I would like to make a motion. So you just need a second. Okay. Chair With that Madam? being said, yes, Commissioner Carthen. Okay, I second. Okay, second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. Commissioner Robinson. Yes, um, Sabrina. Um, two, three, two point seven three eight. Is that what you just said? Yes, sir. Right, and a difference between two point eight. What's that about? What one point zero six two? Yeah, basis point. Um, no, no, but you're not adding rollback. If I if, if one said 2.8, which I think that's what was actually advertised, right? Um, to talk to me. Let's make sure no. I'm what, what was advertised was the 13.063, because uh -huh. that included the half a mil for economic development. And this is removing that half a mil. Okay. Two point seven three. So the half mil would have took it up to what? Thirteen point oh six three. And removing the half a mil based on what was advertised would have took it down to what? Twelve point five six three. I'm good. Thank you. Are you alone, Chair? We have a motion in a second. Uh, if there's no more discussion, we have a motion in a second when I call your Madam Chair, one more. What, what? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. All right, let, let, let me. All right, so Sabrina, what, what, what would be the fund balance? You got to run the numbers, get the spreadsheet. What, what, what would be the fund balance with the scenario that's being presented? Okay, hold on one second. Let me pull. Oh, sorry. Sabrina, do you want me to pull it up? You got it. Yep, you got it. Sabrina, you there? I'm sorry, I was muted the whole time I was talking. <laughs> Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the far left column that Mark had presented, which right now it's showing 10.5, but that doesn't take into account the CARES Act on this column. So depending on how the board chooses to utilize those funds, if they're going to let it, how it's presented right now on the other two columns, it could potentially raise this up 5.5 million, but it would depend on whether the board wants to let that roll into our budget or not. All right, you, okay. We still have to deposit it, but. Yeah. yeah. All right, I need y'all to separate the two though. Recurring expenses, recurring revenue. Uh, I get to five, five, but. Um, so taking out one-time revenue sources, it'd be 105.7 or 10.5, I'm sorry. would be our unassigned ending fund balance, taking out the one-time revenue sources. But the fund balance you all would see on the CAFR would differ depending on how, but for sake of conversation, removing the one-time revenue sources, this is where you'd be. So you're at the bottom. You're just at 10.5. 
And what would a, a 2.88 do without economic development? I just need to know. I got to know what I'm trading off. So yeah. right, do, get, run numbers for 2.88 versus just 2.73. It's 15 basis points less. Mm. So where the two where what number are you wanting me to use now? I'm sorry. Two point eight eight. Two point eight eight. Okay. On the way this spreadsheet works, I'll have to just kind of. You're fine. We, 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 you got right now. We're good. Be almost eleven point three million. I mean, it's a little higher down here, but be in the ballpark of that. Hmm. Yeah, that's just that's just breaking. This, this I, I got it. Thank you. This just puts it at break even. All right, so you got a razor thin. Budget, if y'all go with this, you get nothing to work with as it is. Now, um, if you do what you say you're going to do, you'll be able to go realize through perhaps um, a little bit more shaving, but I still think the multiplier is too small, um, it, which is what we're talking about the military rate. It, it's still not enough. That $1 million, it makes a difference. It's almost equivalent of the rollbacks. But, okay, I'm not going to belabor this. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And when I call your district, please respond. Okay, Commissioner Carthen. Okay, since we're still in discussion, um, I do want to uh, make sure that we, uh, at least for, for my vote on this, because uh, I don't want to end up back here next year. Uh, I, I will restate uh, my amendment to this. To this, um, I want to make the motion that we will cap our budget to incoming expenses, prior year incoming expenses. Okay. Did, did, we have a motion on well, just the order. Did it fail yesterday, or did we it carry? Ken, what happened? Just we just a point of order. We just. I would love to say I can remember, but for some reason I think the amendment passed and yeah. then the motion yeah. failed yesterday. Yeah. So your amendment, you're you're fine. You don't have to redo it. it, it well, no, it, well, you, no, she's amending your motion or, or the Madam Chair's motion by putting this cap, as I understand. Is that correct, Commissioner Carson? Right. So I'm going to restate it. Yeah, because it, it passed yesterday, but it, it the the whole motion fails. So it fell within inside of it. it was, so, yeah, yeah. But so I'll, I'll restate it. Um, not our budget is not to exceed recurring revenues collected for the prior year. Our revenues should not exceed recurring revenue collected from the prior year. Yeah. Just uh, to, Madam just to, Madam yes. Carlton, can I ask for clarification? Yes. Because I typed in what you had yesterday. I just want to make sure I understood the motion yesterday amendment was you're capping next year's budget but, expenses right. at the recurring revenue received in 2020. Is that correct? Correct. That's exactly correct. So, yes. So this right here will will help us, I hope, not to get there. So you're exactly right. Attorney Bernard. Commissioner, you have a motion on the floor. Second. And that's okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. And when I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one, Commissioner Henry Mitchell the third. Madam Chair, I'm still trying to decide on which way to go with this. So I'll I'll defer for right now. District um two commissioner vice chairman ella robinson approve okay district three commissioner yes Jimmy yes district four commissioner ann jones guider y'all got me so confused here <laughs> what are reoccurring expenses um 
<clears throat> I can explain if it helps, Madam. Uh, Chair. Okay, please, please do, please do, because uh, we've got two two facilities going online next year. So what is before you on the amendment only right now is Commissioner Carthorn's motion to cap next year's expenses for budget processing purposes to not exceed the recurring revenues actually received for 2020. So it would give guidance to the staff in preparing for next year's budget to not plan beyond the recurring expenses actually received in 2020. So it's kind of like a, a freeze. Well, it, it, it's a it's a free it's a it's a goal it's a freeze in the sense that it's a goal for budget analysis purposes for next year that could be overcome by a board vote. Okay, I vote yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner uh, and uh, Ramona Jackson Jones. I vote yes. And I'm back to you, District One Commissioner. And and Ken, just for clarity, this particular vote is strictly in reference to the cap. The that amendment, we, yes. I'm just going to the amendment, I apologize. The amendment, yes. Yeah, but before the, you right now is a vote on the amendment got it. proposed by Commissioner Carthen. Got it, got it. I'm with you, and I'll vote yes. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries for the cap on the, at the 107 million. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. We also have an, another motion. We have a second and a motion for the, um, if you could just restate it for me, uh, Sabrina, 2.7. Are we still in discussion though, since we went down? Oh yeah, we're still in, yeah, we, I gotta flip back. Yeah, we're still in discussion. Okay, I, I yield back to you. Can, can um, I do a point of order first, Commissioner Robinson? And yes, Chair? Yeah, that's yeah. not clarified. Madam Chair, the motion that just passed on the amendment did not have a dollar figure. It was tied to recurring revenues received in 2020. So the okay. 107 is not part of the minutes. Okay, please do not add the 107 to the minutes. Thank you, Recur recurring revenue. Thank you. All right, I yield back to you. We were in discussion mode uh, on the motion that's on the floor. Uh, Kelly Robinson, Vice yeah. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so, um, right. You're you're setting the rate in a way that you don't. You, again, it's you're, you're trying to price your assets right. This is why I grew up on strategic pricing of assets across different classes, right? And you you can't tinker with this, but okay, we get it. And if you value too low, you you, you it, it, for the business people out there, like okay, I've always said you, it, it's it's too low. It's too low. I get the taxes, but it's too low. Y'all got a lot of people out here. It ain't just on one person. It's spread across 55,000 people. It's a fixed budget. I get it. I, I get the mind thing that, oh my God, they're raising taxes. Like, okay, guys. So, right. The citizens voted. Thank you, uh, Madam Guider. The citizens voted for two assets in the 2016, which you came into, Madam Chair. Uh, for the past two years, we have been suggesting job to set aside money for that because I know that you can't have no empty buildings. Now, I get it. Put the pandemic to the side for a second. One more time. You can't, you, you can't play both sides. It's like one of the things we did back, back, back when, you know, the early days when uh, Madam Goddard and Commissioner Mitchell, we, we put money aside for the capital transportation fund. Every budget, boom, boom. It gave us something to work with, doing with strategic opportunities. So contrary to perhaps certain people, no, we got a lot done there, but very little in that we were disciplined. We saved. Now, of course, it, it, it got pirated, of course, to for overtures and overruns, but that, that that's neither here nor there. We, as a board, we, we, we were able to make uh, decisions that were disciplined and anticipatory. Now, here we are. Now you're going with a 10.3, 10.5 at, 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 at the bottom. Well, we can always amend the budget, but then there we go. You, you can always amend. We never, you know, you know we can always amend as a board if we choose so the pleasure. But it, like, okay, are y'all looking at this right? This was already in play. 
And I get it. Okay, we won't put nobody in that senior center. We won't put nobody in that. All right. You know what you're saying. But they said we wanted this. And they expected us to. Y'all didn't plan for this? How long y'all been doing this? Four years? Mm -hmm. Right? Like we got to listen. So I, I'm just, now I'm glad you triggered that. So it was, thank you for saying what you said. But again, one more time. Yes, we're setting the millage rate for the current budget. But if we set the rate, you let it alone, you let it ride. So you can forecast, leave that thing alone. And you can anticipate like, okay, based on the needs of the community, they're needs-based commission. It's need-based. So they said they needed this. They voted for it. This wasn't one of our, we decided as five, but like they voted for that. We, we didn't plan for that. So one more time, I, I'm, I'm concerned about the handicap. I get it. It's no easy way. It, it, there is no easy way, but it's like, you, do you know what you're doing? Even in light of now, do y'all understand what just even that amount, what that means? I yield the floor. Chairman Jones. Commissioner Carthen, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, uh, this morning I did attend the um, the stakeholders meeting regarding um, our new facility, South Sweetwater, and a couple of the uh, seniors uh, who were in there. Actually, I could say all the seniors who were there uh, do understand where we are, and they understand that, uh, and they will, uh, of course, put this out to their neighbors as well. They are excited about that senior center. They're excited about where it is. We all went over and we took a walk around the facility. And we know that probably within the next 75 to 80 days, we will have the keys to that. But they also understand that COVID is going on and they also understand where the county is in relation to, uh, to um, our um, finances. And so the expectation for them is, we're glad it's here. We will see it. We will be in it when the time permits. And uh, today, what we have are two pandemics. We have a pandemic of COVID-19, but we also have a pandemic of financial woes. And if I'm really honest, we have a third pandemic, which is the pandemic of injustice and social racial and racism in our, in our country and in our county. Um, those are three pandemics we're all dealing with right now. The pandemic that's before us today is the pandemic of finances. And so, yes, those two centers will come aboard, but we will have to manage that. And I believe the people of Douglas County will see it. They will understand and they know that we will do the best we can in opening those facilities um, and when we can. We, we got them built, they're, they're coming on board, but right now, if we can't open them, like the seniors that spoke this morning. We understand and we're glad it's here and we will work to see what we can do to help. And with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Okay, any other discussion from the board and I'm gonna move on. We have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Please, when I call your name or your and your district, please cast your vote accordingly. District one, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, Madam Chair, I'm still in deliberation. Okay. District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. I'm pausing two for a minute. Okay. District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Yes. District 4 Commissioner Ann Jones Guider. District 4, no. Okay. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. I'm sorry, I was talking on mute, but I'm, I, I, I still haven't come to any resolve. I, 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 I'm still deliberating. Okay. District 
to Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Yeah, I'm still back to you know, 278 and 288, but um, you go ahead, Madam Chair. Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, yes. Commissioner Mitchell, Henry Mitchell III. I'll just say this before I say anything outside of a vote. This is probably one of the biggest and tough decisions throughout this county that we've dealt with. But I'm not going to get into a deliberation on or, or any true comments outside of I told you so. And I still can't see myself supporting this millage rate. So I have to stand where I stood in the very beginning, and that would be a vote no. Commissioner Robinson? Mm. District 2. Ah. Mm. Swing vote. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, this one, this one, this, this is uh, obviously, uh, I don't think it's enough, but then at the same point, I think it's commensurate because the responsibility, um, they don't pay us to do day to day, to execute, to deliver. I think what we did, what we're doing here is to, okay, we're, we're putting boundaries, we're putting restrictions accordingly. Uh, and so, um, um, to realize the vision you have, you're going you're to have to earn it. So with that being said, I vote yes. All right, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Board of Commissioners, we have a 3-2 vote and the motion carries. So, um, Clerk, do you have the proposed millage rate? Yes, ma'am. Do you want me to repeat it? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, the motion was to um, increase the millage rate by 2.738, which leaves a total millage rate of 2.563. 12.5. 12.5. Oh, I'm sorry, 12.563, yes. Okay, thank you so much. Just wanted to make sure for the record. All right, Board of Commissioners, thank you all so much for your time and talent. This has been a very long uh, week for us and as we try to drill down on our numbers and, and try to balance our situation with the circumstances of our citizens. Again, I appreciate your time. And again, this is uh, uh, this too shall pass. We are still trying to see what we can do to make sure that our citizens uh, uh, really uh, are receive services and that's very important we cannot cut our services we have to provide services to our citizens and um, with, if there's nothing else to come before this board of commissioners uh, thank you so much and uh, have a good day this meeting is adjourned <laughs>